of your feet. Shut up, One more time. Elisha raised the dead twice. Elijah raised the dead once. Elisha raised the dead twice. Elisha raised the first dead person, this child of a Shunammite woman, in his life. He laid the rod, laid himself on the child, breathed on the child, did several things before the child could come up. First of all, he sent his rod through Gehazi. He didn't walk. He stretched himself on the child, did everything. That was the struggle that accompanied the first raising of the dead. The second raising of the dead, there was no struggle. They were just trying to bury a man and the man's body touched the dead bones of Elisha. In 2 Kings chapter 13 from verse 7, and he jerked back to life. Why was there struggle in the first time and there was no struggle in the second one? The flesh in the second one was gone. 
the body touched the dead bones not the flesh flesh was gone and in any case in that miracle only God will take 100% glory because the man who should have boasted that I raised the dead was already dead the reason why God is so limited in many of our lives is that he is not sure who will take the glory He's not sure who will boast at the end. He's not sure who will allocate the thing to his own doing. We'll take that thought verse again. And the chorus. And I'd like you to mean it. There is nothing I am, nothing I can become that is not your help. That is not your power. If you say you can pray, it is God who walketh in you. Both to will and to do. Of his good prayer. If you say you can fast, it is God who worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That is, if he does not help you, you can't help, you cannot succeed in doing his will. It's not of him that will it or run it. It's of God who shows he says, What hast thou that thou did not receive? If you can sing, when did you get the voice? If you can preach, how did you get the preaching mantle? Or who opened the scripture for you to see? There is absolutely nothing a man can boast on or boast about in the presence of God. When we come to the presence of God and we say, Lord, I am just zero. And I'm not bragging, that's the truth. I'm not even, that is not humility, that is reality. I am nothing minus you. I've seen God raise the dead people before. Directly and then many, many indirect. I can easily walk to the mortuary now and say, bring all the dead people. Why don't I do so? Because I'm not the one who raised anyone. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and sing that song meditatively. Third person. I believe that this song is already a preaching of its own tonight. I take up the cross. Let it crucify the flesh. Let it be no longer I who lives. Shut up, 
What can I do without you? Who am I your death without you? What have I been able to do without you? For it is you, Lord, who walked within my life. And now the third verse. I lay my ground. i uh-huh. 
Let it be no longer I that live. Let Christ Jesus live through me. Lift up your hands. Spirit of the living God. Paul afresh. Break us. Mold us. Feel us. Then you can use us. To your own glory. We are sorry for where we stood in your way. The way of your move where we struggled with you for glory. Do something fresh and something new. Give us another chance to confirm to the world that all the glory belongs to you. My qualification is sinking sand. My ability is sinking sand. My connections are sinking sand. My effort is sinking sand. Everything I can boast about, they are all sinking sand. It's only you I can stand on that can hold me. Everything under heaven is subject to failure. upon this service tonight. In Jesus' precious name. Lift your hands. And see him walk on your life. He's walking on your emotion. Walking on your passion. And you whisper that name, Jesus. In 
Jesus precious name thank you for this moment thank you because we shall rise out of here tonight knowing fully well that we have been in your presence be thou glorified in Jesus precious name give the Lord a praise as you take your seat I wish that this, the, the lyrics of this song will be available, may be whatsappable, well labeled, well identified. Put it, write it down on your, on your, in your notebook, your prayer book, and then let it form a consecrational approach in prayer. Those, th those were the kind of effects that the hymns had and still have. Oh, let me feel thee near me. The world is ever near. Above this, oh, let me hear thee speaking. Above the storms of passion, the murmurs of self-will. Times will be singing that kind of song repeatedly for the next three hours. Crying. Allowing the wordings to deal with you until you are just thoroughly dealt with. So I think we can make these lyrics of these words available and then it will help us. Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou Forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the bad, either at my Oh, no, from the part away, if thou wilt be my God, second verse. Oh, The songs I see.
Thank you, Master, and breathe on your word tonight in Jesus' name. Psalm 107, verse 20. Consider that as the first part of this message. If we have two messages tonight, one from the songs and then one from the, the scripture. Again, let's see how we can make that. take up the cross, let it crucify my flesh how we can make that available Psalm 107 verse 20 He sent his wall and healed them and delivered them from their destruction He sent his wall and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Subject is the word and faith for health and healing. The word for faith. The word and faith 
for health and healing. Our objective this evening is to understand the place of the word in divine health and healing and also understanding the place of faith in divine health and healing. The word of God is a major key to divine healing and health as far as the Bible makes it clear. Abundantly made clear in scripture. We read already, right, we're going to look at scriptures that make this clear. First, Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 20 all the way to verse 22. He said, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And they are held to all their flesh. Will you stand up on your feet? And ask that this word will produce the effect that the scripture just said health to your flesh. Open your mouth and speak to God right now. This world Open your mouth and speak to God. I make demand On your wall to me today, it shall produce the result. Speak to God, it shall produce desired result. Take up the microphones. Desired result. Desired result. Open your mouth and speak to God. Desired result. Open your mouth and pray. I receive the effect of that word today. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and speak to God. I receive the word today. Satire, 
Open your mouth, I receive the word for me tonight. I receive the word for me tonight. I receive it tonight. In Jesus' precious name, so shall it be. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy and I decree life for everyone here tonight. Health and strength. And every agenda of the enemy for you, cancelled. Give the Lord a shout of praise as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to 22. I'm going to read it from other passages. Give me the living Bible version of that scripture. He said, you are going to give me the living Bible version. You will give me the new international version. And also give me the message Bible. He said, listen son of mine to what I say. Listen carefully. Keep these thoughts ever in mind. Let them penetrate deep within your heart. For they will mean real life for you and radiant health. That is, the word of God will make you radiate in health. The New International Version and then, you say, my son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. That is the word of God makes the whole of your life to, to move in health. Now the message Bible said, Dear friend, listen well to my words. Tune your ears to my voice. Keep my message in plain view at all times. Concentrate. Learn it by heart. Those who discover this was live. That is, they really live. Body and soul, they are busting with health. Body and soul, they are busting with health. They are not sickly and weakly. They are busting with health. Psalm 107 and in verse 20 is talking about the efficacy of the word of God. Psalm 107 verse 20 sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Luke chapter 5 and in verse 15. Luke chapter 5 and in verse 15. He sent his word. Okay, Luke 5 15. But so much the more when there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. They came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. There is connection between hearing and healing. They came to hear and be healed. There is a connection between hearing and healing. There is a connection between receiving and healing. There is a connection between teaching and healing. They came to hear and be healed. In Luke chapter 6 and in verse 17. He said almost the same thing. And he came down with them and stood in the plain. And the great company of his disciples. And a great multitude of people. Out of all Judea and Jerusalem. And from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. Which came to hear him. And to be healed. Of their diseases. Prayer can give you healing. But the word keeps you in health. Somebody can pray for you to be healed. But it is the word that keeps you in health. There is radiotherapy, chemotherapy, physiotherapy, psychotherapy. And there is remotherapy, rematherapy. The therapy, the treatment of, of the word. There is, there is, there is, there is, there is wordotherapy, if I'm to put it at the layman's level. You know, in those days in the Rewan church, around 15, 16, 17 years ago, when people came in for diverse sicknesses, we, we, 
we, we had what we call word therapy. We had scriptures written down. Go and read these scriptures, meditate on it, declare the scriptures. And people were coming healed. Am I communicating at all? So the word of God is, let me say, the most foundational requirement for healing and health. The word of God is both prophylactic and therapeutic. Therapy is instant cure. Prophylaxis is the prevention of the disease. Am I communicating? Chloroquine is therapeutic. Daraprim is prophylactic. When they give C-class Daraprim and pregnant women Daraprim to take, it is to prevent malaria from happening to them. When they give chloroquine, it is to treat the active disease. The word of God will both cure the active affliction and prevent the affliction that was intending to come from arriving. Question is, how does the word of God go about producing healing? How does the word transmit health and healing? Number one, the word of God is the carrier of the life of God. The word of God is the carrier of the life of God. We just read it now in Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. Where he said that the word, all the way to verse 22, is life to all their flesh. Life. John chapter 6 verse 63 said, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The word I speak to you is life, is life. And that life is the life of God. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 he said, and as he spoke to me, the spirit entered into me. The spirit entered. John chapter 5 verse 24. We are seeing the life of the word. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth him that sent me has everlasting life. Everlasting life is Zoe, the life of God. Not just life in eternity, not just durability of life, but quality of life. Vitality of life. He that heareth my word and believeth them has vitality of life, has, has quality of life, has longevity of life, has durability of life. In Philippians chapter 2 and in verse 16, the Bible calls the word of God the word of life. It says, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. The word of God is the word of life. It's the carrier of life. In 1 John chapter 1 and in verse 1, the, 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 the scripture speaking says, that which we have, that which was from the beginning, which we have seen, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled. That is the word of life. That is the word of God injects you, injects you with life, injects you with life, injects you with life. The man by the name E. W. Kenyon was such a worded, worded, worded. He ate the word, ate the word, ate the word up. Just ate the word like you eat, 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 eat biscuit. At the age of 85 stroke, 86. Please this picture again. At the age, okay, at the age of, in, in his 70s to 80s, he died at the age of 80. I heard that young men ran after him. They couldn't catch with his steps. He would be walking, people would be running. Today you look at Gloria Copeland and she looks like age 35. The wife of Kenneth Copeland. Are you struggling to find her picture? February next year she's 80 years. Does she look like 25 or something? She and her husband, they don't have any other business but to be chewing the word. 
The man is like 85 years thereabout. There is a life that is inherent in the word. And that life is coming upon somebody tonight. You are a believer, shout the Lord and say amen. Secondly, that's first the word of God. The of the power of God. Power. That includes healing power. Deliverance power. Is the carrier of the power of God. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. He said where the word of the king is. There is power. That is the word of the Lord. In Luke chapter 4 verse 32. The Bible said his word was with power. And they were at astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power it was with power in Luke chapter 4 and in verse 36 with authority and they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying what a word is this for with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out his words carry power they carry power in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and in verse 5, the Bible talked about the work of faith with power. He said, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. The gospel carries power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Power, power, power. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible said, God upholds all things by the word of his power. By the word of his power. So contact with the word is contact with power. And pa the power of God transmits the healing force of God. Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. When you encounter electric cables, you connect electric current. When you encounter word cables, you connect divine current. Mm. When you break down glue, break down, when you break down yam, you get glucose and its derivatives. When you break down granite, you get amino acids. When you break down palm oil, you get palmitic acids and, and oleic acids and, and all the, what do you call this, lipids, lipoproteins and so on. When you break down the world, you get divine molecules of fire, power. You get do 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 namis. Am I communicating? When you chew yam, you get physical energy. When you chew word, you get divine energy. Am I communicating at all? When people don't eat well, they get malnourished. And when they get malnourished, they get infection like quashotic children. When people don't feed on word well, they can have the predilection and predisposition for not just infection but afflictions. Hallelujah. Please don't forget that in breaking down the word, you connect the power and that power enters your body to check out what is not meant to be there. Somebody say a loud amen. When, when flies are playing on an electric oven, under what condition is, 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 is that? Flies are playing on an electric oven. What is the condition of that electric oven? Either it's not working or it's not connected to electricity. Now, if it is connected to electricity, what happens? The flies are still relaxing. Except the flies that want to commit suicide. Or the one that dreamed that he died. By the first appearance of heat, they take off. That is what happens when you get watered. You become red hot in the spirit. And by the first appearance of divine energy, they begin to find their level. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? 
I announce to somebody here, every disease and every virus that has been feasting in your body, today they are taken off by fire. They are taken off by power. Shout the loudest, amen. Number three, the word of God is the carrier of light that dispels darkness. It's a carrier of light that dispels darkness. And we are talking about the darkness of affliction. In John chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible said the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness cannot withstand it. The darkness cannot resist it as the light shines in darkness. In Psalm 119 verse 105, it said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light. So the word is light. Psalm 119 verse 130, it said, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. When the word enters, light entered. And there is understanding to the simple. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8, he sent the word into Jacob and it has lighted upon Israel. The word entered Jacob, it lighted upon Israel. In 2 Peter chapter 1 in verse 19, he said, we have a more sure word. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. We are unto you, do well that you take it as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. He's talking about the word. When the word arrives, darkness evaporates. And in case you don't understand what I mean, there are many sicknesses that are not biological. They are not pathological. They are demonical. They are not, they are not, they are not something you, it's not, it's not a virus. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a germ. It's not, it's not, it's not an anatomical situation. It's, it's, they are, they are just, they are, just, they are satanic arrows. How do you explain that boy? That testified about three Sundays ago. That had an encounter where. God used me to lay hands on him in, the, in an encounter and so on. And this guy vomited 16 pins. That almost looked like nails. Out of his chest. And he is age 16. All manner of afflictions. He had been to the hospital and the doctors could not diagnose anything. Those are demonic situations sustained by the forces of darkness. Those are hellish powers. It, is, it takes the light, just one light, bam! And that darkness is unraveled. And it just, well, just one revelation. And that is the termination of the affliction. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? The light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Everyone who is here today that is suffering an affliction that came upon you by the forces of darkness, by this declaration, by this preaching, by this announcement, that darkness is off your system forever. It is off your system forever. I will not forget the woman called Rachel. I was in... 600, 500 level to 600 level medical school. When her brother, a cousin, was my classmate, brought her all the way from the estate. This lady, they had operated on her abdomen because of all manner of afflictions until they had no place to do surgery anymore. This lady, so at a point when they could, they didn't know what to do with her, they took her to psychiatry psychiatry ward that it must be a mental condition am i communicating at all while she was in the psychiatry ward she saw people coming to minister to her that had no legs they were only coming like they are walking in the air while she was in that ward she told her sister can you help me buy coke one of those voices told her we can give you coke if you need coke miserable miserable and then she ignored the voice her sister went and bought the coke 
Sister opened the coke. The unseen hand took the coke. Turned the coke upside down with the coke open. And yet not a drop of coke, of coke fell, fell out. It's like Nigerian movie. <laughs> not a drop of Coca-Cola fell out of the, poured out of the, of, of the glass. That was the kind of affliction she was in. You know her offense. When her mother was looking for the fruit of the womb, she went to the waters. And then they promised her two children and gave her the names. You born a son and a, 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 a girl. The son, this is his name. You will give him. And the, the girl, this shall be the name. So she gave them the names. I'm sure they were different names from the one we're calling now. Ah, but at a certain age, we will take them back. So when the son reached that age, he died. Before she could reach that age, she repented. So they couldn't take her, so the oppression became miserable. It didn't take 30 minutes before those demons were checked out. The doctors couldn't do anything. They sent her to psychiatrists. Psychiatrists couldn't do nothing. Those are darkness-sponsored afflictions that require the fire and the light of God to check out. At her age, she wasn't married at that time yet. One day after graduation, I traveled and went to a hospital, private hospital, the same hospital of that her relation. And I went, and here she was, working as a hospital attendant. How are you doing? Fine. How far? Oh, I'm doing very well. I've already married. Oh, wow. How far? This is my son. For whatsoever God doeth shall be forever. Nothing shall be taken from it and nothing added. And God doeth it that men might fear before him. There are people who are not married because of the power of darkness. There are those who are married, no child, because of the forces of hell. I am here to announce today every power of darkness that has prevented you from being who God wants you to be or living in health or wholeness. That darkness is destroyed now. It is dissolved now. Shout the loudest. Amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. That is why the word of God penetrates the regions of darkness. We saw Acts chapter 12 verse 7. Peter was in prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and the light shined inside the prison that the, the light is word word is light and he smote peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands when light appears chain must fall chain must scatter when the light arrives the chain must dissolve that was consistent with psalm 105 i believe verse 20 verse 19 he said this it is it, it, until the time it, the word of God came, the light came, the word of the Lord tried, and the king sent and loosed him. The word will break the chains, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. When the light comes, the chains break. When the light comes, the yoke must break. When the light comes, freedom comes. I speak to someone here today. The light coming your world, your way tonight is breaking every chain around your life every chain around your family every chain around your destiny every chain around your business shout the loud most amen take your seat number four so the word of god is the carrier of the life of god the word of god is the carrier of the power of god the word of god is the carrier of light that dispels darkness and number four the word of god is the fuel of faith and you know that faith is very critical in healing I'll talk about that the word of God fuels your faith Acts chapter 6 verse 7 the Bible said concerning and the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith the word of God fuels your faith when the word of God increased the company of those who connected the faith multiplied. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. He says it is. What saith it? The word is near you. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is 
the word of faith. The word is the sponsor of faith. And he said in verse 17 of Romans chapter 10, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 8, he said there, he said, Concerning faith, he said, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place, your faith to God word or towards God is spread abroad. If the word sounds from you, your faith cannot be hidden. Your faith is spoken because the word of God sounded from you. Everywhere you see word, you see faith. Where you see vibrant word, you see buoyant faith. If there is no dryness of word, there can be no shortage of faith. It's God speaking to somebody here. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7, it talks about those who teach you remember them which have rule they rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of god whose faith follow if they carry the word they must carry faith whose word, whose faith follow <coughs> remember them which have the rule over, over you who have spoken unto you the word of god whose faith follow when the corona corona bad boy came initially i told people i said they shouldn't close everywhere by force. Those who have church for faith to run, let it run. Let it be optional. Do you understand? They're, they're, unbelievably in some quarters, you can't believe the kind of people who are advocating that all places should be closed. You cannot believe it. I said, no. Let it be on to every man according to their faith. Those who say the church or whatever should not hold, let it not hold. Those who say it should hold, let it hold. Let us see the virus that will follow to church. You know, it is at the junction that road divides. <laughs> Do you know the meaning of that proverb? <laughs> Everybody can know Who you are and what you stand for only in times of controversies and confrontation. Everybody is normal at normal times. It is in times of confrontation that who is who is known. Are you following what I'm saying here today? Everybody can pray that rain shouldn't fall. It is when the rain starts falling that you know who really believes. Archbishop Idahusa said, somebody said, rain should not fall. And he carried the umbrella. The prayer has been answered. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is to every man according to his faith. Whose faith follow if they preach to you the word in force and in fire, then there is a faith to follow. How many of you have noticed that people they call word of faith people are also people of word, they are worded, worded, worded people. Now, why is, how is faith necessary to your health and healing? Three things. This is 4A now. Faith makes whole. Faith makes whole. It's key to wholeness. Thy faith has made thee whole. Matthew chapter 9 verse 22. I believe that that was what Jesus spoke to that woman with the issue of blood. But Jesus turned unto her. She said within her, I said, if I may but touch the, 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 his garment, I shall be whole. Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Matthew 15, 28, the Greek Syrophoenician woman who said that the dogs eat the crumbs from under the table. 
Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole. From that hour, faith makes whole. Mark chapter 10 verse 52. To blind Bartimaeus, Jesus speaking. And Jesus said unto him, go your way. Thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Luke chapter 17 and in verse 19, he said, and he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. That was the one leper that returned back to testify. Faith makes whole. Faith to be made whole means nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Faith puts your life together. Faith is a repairer of life, a repairer of destiny. Faith makes whole. When you, when you step into the realm of faith, you have stepped into heaven's workshop to be made whole. Faith is a spiritual insurance against damage. Am I communicating at all? When you have insured a vehicle and that vehicle has a damage, you don't struggle with it. It is just made whole. It's returned back by the insurance company. Faith makes whole. Number two, faith is the switch of power. Faith switches on supernatural power. Every time faith is released, power is switched on. In Acts chapter 6, verse 8, the Bible speaking concerning Stephen said he was full of faith and power. He was full of faith and power. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and in verse 11, 2 Thessalonians, I'm sorry I'm rushing so much. There is so much to say. Wherefore also, we pray always for you that our God will count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. You cannot be faith-filled and be powerless. You can't be faithful and be powerless. To be faithful or to be filled with faith is to be power filled and the power of course checks out the agenda of the enemy faith switches on power in first peter chapter one and in verse five he said we are kept by the power of god your healing your health is kept your protection is kept. Your preservation is kept. We are kept as a whole by the power of God through faith. So through faith, power is released. Men and women of faith are kingdom power brokers. You effortlessly, naturally swim, revel in power. Somebody say amen. Is anybody getting into here at all? So this is how the word of God keeps you whole, keeps you healthy. Finally, thirdly, faith is the destroyer of fear. You know, fear sustains calamity. In Job chapter 3 verse 25, Job said, the things I greatly feared has come on me. That is, the afflictions, the diseases, the disasters, the calamities around Job, fear invited them. The things I greatly fear. There are so many people who are not sick, but they are afraid. And if that fear does not go, the sickness only arrives a matter of time. I prayed for one woman who said that she nursed her auntie or someone who died of a particular cancer. She was afraid of that particular cancer until that cancer arrived about 18 years later. The same cancer arrived the same. But faith gives fear a technical knockout. And if fear is not on ground, Satan has no ground. Somebody say loud, Amen. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. In 
In our place, they say, what, what you don't see, don't see you. <laughs> I want to paraphrase it by saying, what you don't fear can't catch you. Fear, fear those who don't fear it. Oh, yes. Your adversary, the roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. There are people who are victims of their fears. You know, the Bible says your adversary, the roaring lion. You know, I've done a little lecture in, about lionology. Just some little, just, just on the study of the lion. Roaring lion, elderly lion. You know, I told you the story before how we went to Kenya National Park. And in a park, you are inside um, a vehicle that it's more like a prison. That is, it has bars. You can look through the, 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 the vehicle and air can come in, but it's, it's, it's locked so that no wild animal enters the vehicle. So you are, the difference between the zoo and the wildlife park is that in the zoo, the animals are caged so you can look at them. In the wildlife park, you are caged so that the animals can move around. That's, that's the wildlife park kind of vehicle there. You see how the lions are jumping on top of the vehicle, lamenting, 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 lamenting. What is all this now? See plenty food, see plenty food, see plenty food. And person cannot eat, person cannot eat. They are just lamenting there now. <laughs> all right. If, if the people move from the edge to the center. You know, in, uh, in, in Kenya, uh, in the, the wildlife area I used to, I heard that there are some times that the dog will return back home without one ear. That is, he encountered a lion, he tore off the ear, and then he ran, he escaped. <laughs> so, if he catch somebody's ear, now he can eat it off immediately. So, we are seeing baboons and seeing things, and then we came to a place, and the tall guy said, we can come out now. See the lion you just saw? He said, we can come out now that here is safe. I said, safe like how? <laughs> is there a boundary between the lions and, uh, and this place? He said, no, no, this place belongs to baboons. It is safe. I answered the man, I said, well, in myself, I say, I'm a man of faith, though. <laughs> but faith is not an excuse for foolishness. <laughs> if a lion arrives suddenly now, okay, what do we do? The answer he gave me shocked me. He said, lie down on the ground straight or stand still. Don't shift. Don't behave like anything came. He said in that case, the lion will recognize that you are not afraid. You are audacious. You are not fidgeting. You are not eatable. He said he goes after those who start running or those who are shaking or anything. Then he told me about the Maasai tribesmen. He says, see those people? They, 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 they wear red headgear and, and, then, and, 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 and hold a stick and a spear. He said, these ones walk freely among lions. He said, they don't fear lions, so lions fear them. They're just very, very freely. Very, very freely among the lions. They are passing. Lion is passing. If they want, they can kill the lion. Those guys, when you become age 12, you need to go and bring the head of a lion to confirm you are now a man. And they marry with lion head bright price. You need, to, you need to confirm to your father-in-law that you are a man. And you can take care of your wife. I 
Uh, maybe by now that they, have, uh, they are doing the preservation of animals and, and it has been outlawed, killing the lion anyhow, maybe they have changed. But the other day we saw a film, right? Where a lion was eating meat. And one of them walked to where the lion was. And the lions ran away. And he collected the meat and left. He took meat from lion mouth. And he said, your adversary, the devil, is like that lion. He knows those who fear. He looks for those who fear. He victimizes those who fear. He intimidates the fearful. And he knows those who don't fear him. Am I communicating at all? He knows those who fear. He knows those who don't fear him. Hey! How many of you are about to deal with a roaring lion like that? To deal with the roaring lion like that. To deal with the devil like that. David said, I went after that lion. I went after the lion, smote it, and collected the lamb from the mouth of the lion. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of those. I want you to lionize tonight. Let vegetable heart give way for lion heart. Let chicken heart give way for lion heart. You are going to tell the devil you can't kill me before my time. You can't finish me before my time. I must fulfill my destiny. Devil between me and you, I'm the one to finish you. I am the one to end you. Somebody blow in the spirit for one minute. I refuse, I refuse, I refuse. Ziratis, Kebaronaya, Leperita, Sike Teliminasha, Latina, Sigora, Talabasta. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yalatani Migorada Haza, Yaratani Migalado Haradish. Lepere de Heseni Gagayaya, La Tarata Sata Rata Shanana, La Parata Sata Laya Hashadana, Laya Dabara Hasino Gogolaya Hazanina, Lepere de Gayada Hashta, Lepere de Galala Hashta, Zeretoni Megalaya Dase, Ligaya Dase, Lepere de Gadasi, Retiso Mikore Tefide Geletani Mogoratafia. Mogorotafia, 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 Telimi, Terefetikia Gadashi, Leperita Zimarutala Katayada, Hey, Shashatatata, Liperete Sete, Leperete Sete. I am not a chicken. I am a, the brother of the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I shall intimidate the lion, the, the roaring lion. Shout. In Jesus' precious name. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. That is what faith does for you. It destroys your fear. Like they say, faith and fear are mutually exclusive. They don't exist together. They are diametrically opposed. In Mark chapter 4 verse 37... And in verse 40, when Jesus walked upon the water, there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? You can only be fearful because faith does not exist. Why is it that ye are so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? See, when faith rises, fear drops. And where faith drops, fear goes up. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. He said, I, st I stare, I put you in remembrance that you stare up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, audacity, of love, and of a sound mind. Somebody say a loud amen. So you see what the word of God does for you. The word of God does so much for you. Connects you with the life of God. Connects you with the power of God. Connects you with light. Connects you with faith. That is you are constructed rugged. Finally. 
How do you connect the word? How do you connect divine health and healing through the word? I'm going to be very, very sharp because of our time right now. How do you connect divine health and healing through the word? Number one, by receiving the sent word. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and he healed them. So there is a word sent. By receiving the sent word. Father show me that scripture that is particular for this affliction. There is a word sent. The Job said how forcible are right words. Job 6, 25. So there is the right word, the right revelation, the sent revelation, particular inside that you just see, bam, it blows your mind and blow, blast out the affliction by receiving the sent word. That was what the centurion says, send your word, speak the word only. Matthew chapter 8, verse 7 to 8. Speak the word only, just send me one word and thy servant shall be healed. So that makes you to search, pray, and trust God for the particular word, word you will hold on to that will blast that thing off your life. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody shout the loud most amen. Say if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your, in your, in your mortal body. He that raises Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. That is, if I carry the spirit of God, the spirit of God supplies me with vitality and energy. So every time I I am irrigating my system. Leave it for another day. By receiving the sent word. Number two, by meditating now the sent word can come while you are looking and searching on your own and it can come also while the servant of the Lord or this, they are listening to a tape or a message or something and the appropriate word looks like this word is for me, is for my healing. Number two, by meditating on the word. And this is the word, this is any word. Staying on the diet of the word, this is more like the prophylactic, yes the prophylactic therapy. This is the one that keeps you in health. Meditating on the word. We read that already in Proverbs 4 verse 20 to verse 22. He said, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. So, you are just continuously on the word. In study. In daily reading, daily study, in listening to tape messages like this and any other message on this kind of subject or any subject for that, just feeding on the word. Feeding on the word. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of his comfort, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. And then he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. This guy is just flourishing. He bringeth forth his fruit. In his season, his leaf also shall not wither whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He is just flourishing in health and strength. Because he's feeding on the word. Am I communicating at all? The other one is when you are looking for the word. The right word to tackle a sickness. The other one is, the second one is when you are just, the word is your normal diet. You know, medical science. Hippocrates, who is called the father of medicine. The doctors take what they call the oath of Hippocrates. At the, when, they, when they, you are being inducted into the medical profession to confirm and to, and to confess that you are going to use your knowledge to save life and so on and so forth. That one said that the best medication is nutrition. That if you eat well and eat right, the need for drugs will reduce. 
And if you extrapolate that into scripture, when you stay, when you stay well fed on the word, when you are well fed on the word, and you are living normally, feeding on the word regularly, preferably daily, a word is entering your ears, entering your eyes, entering your spirit. You are, you are servicing your health. You are servicing your strength. You are servicing your energy. I've seen young men that, I'm, that are 20 years younger than me. Some 30 years. I'm far more tired. Far more tired. When we finished the last convention where I preached from morning till night, morning till night, morning till evening, morning till night, morning till night, then did Friday night with you. And then by <laughs> Saturday afternoon, we're in a Saba Delta state for their um, state Thanksgiving. One bishop said, when he saw me in Asaba, he stood up from his bed. He said, I'm not tired again. <laughs> he said, what? I, I'm not the one who preached. And see, this man is already, I'm not tired again. One of our young men in church here, we spoke that day. He said, he said sir, when I saw you in Asaba, he said, I woke up on the spot. He said, how old am I? I refuse to be tired. He said, sir, do you need me now? I can come now. Any work I want to do now. <laughs> The word of God keeps you in shape, keeps you fit by meditating on the word. It brings you wholeness. Number three, how do you, how do you connect divine health and healing through the word? By speaking and declaring the word. Speaking it, declaring it. The woman with the issue of blood spoke. Mark chapter 5 verse 28, she said in her heart, if I touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Matthew chapter 8, verse 7 to 8, the centurion says, speak the word only. My servant shall be healed. If somebody can speak the word and his servant to be healed, what if the person speaks it to himself? Numbers 14, 28, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do. By his stripes I am healed. I am not a candidate for weakness and sickness. Finally, by doing the word. Doing the word. In Luke chapter 17 verse 14. The lepers. Jesus looked at them. He saw them. He said, go. Show yourself to the priests. And it came to pass. That as they went. Doing the word. They were cleansed. In John chapter 5 verse 8 to 9. Jesus said to the man that was 38 years at that pool. Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole. He took up his bed and walked. Doing the word. Don't forget this forever. Obedience brings wholeness. And disobedience may bring ill health. Disobedience can actually bring affliction. Adam and Eve stepped into the world of affliction from the garden of bliss. By disobedience. Lord, is there anything you want me to do I'm not doing? Is there anything I am doing that I am not supposed to do? Is there anything I am supposed to do that I am not doing? Just let me know. So I don't give any room for the enemy. Today is your day of health and wholeness. Stand up on your feet with a shout of praise. Take your seat like a lion i want to stand and roar did you see the picture on the on the on the phone of that girl i told dr mr nature i said this looks like a lion roaring stand with a shout of praise a loud shout of praise